Good morning, students. So in this video, we are going to talk about finding the area of pretty much every shape, every shape, excuse me, except a circle. Um, the next video, I will show you how we find the area and perimeter of circles because they are very unique. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about how we find the area of all the other shapes. Um, so you should have gotten a handout uh, called your area cheat sheet. Um, I actually taped mine the opposite way. On the other side of this, it should say area uh, cheat sheet. But basically uh, what this is, is we're going to fill out and understand like the different parts, components, dimensions, you could call them of shapes. And then it's already given to you. You don't have to write it down all of the area formulas for these shapes. The nice thing about geometry is pretty much with anything that you do, you don't need to memorize the formulas. Over time, you'll probably naturally memorize the formulas, but they'll always be given to you on your tests, um, your standardized tests, your in-class tests and so forth. So um, let's just go over the different aspects. I've kind of already filled in the blanks. So if you want to take a moment just to pause um, and fill in the blanks, or you can fill in the blanks kind of as I explain it. So it's up to you if you want to pause right now to copy this, or if you want to like write it down as you go. But let's talk about what area actually is now. So area is the amount of space across a two-dimensional figure or what's known as a flat figure. Um, and because we're working in the two-dimensional space, we have to make sure that when we're writing down our units, whatever it is that we're taking the area of, we have to make sure we write them a certain way as well. Um, area is needed for a variety of different things. Like if you're trying to figure out how much carpet you need to put down in your house or how much flooring you need to put down, you have to know the area, like how much space is actually actually being taken up in that room. If you're trying to figure out how much grass you need to put in your yard, if you're getting grass in your yard, um, you need to know the area of your backyard. So you know how much grass to buy. Like there's a variety of different things we use area for. If you're trying to figure out how much paint you need to cover a wall, you need to know the area of the wall. So because we're looking at this amount of space on a flat two-dimensional figure, um, we are going to do what's called measured in square units. And we write all of our units with an exponent of two. So you can see two examples here. So we have inches to the power of two and centimeters to the power of two. And another way that we could say this when we take something to the power of two is square. So inches with the exponent of two is the same thing as like square inches or centimeters to the power of two is the same thing as saying like centimeters squared. And you might be thinking like, okay, why is this important? Um, but it's important because when we're trying to differentiate between perimeter area and volume, the units having the exponent helps us determine like, am I working in a one dimensional, two dimensional or three dimensional it, like surface, like what dimension am I working in? Am I working with flat figures, three-dimensional and so forth? So it, it's just um, the mathematical way is when we're multiplying with two units, like meters times meters, we're not just going to say meters, anything times itself is going to be um, squared, right? Like two times two is the same as two squared. So that's kind of the mathematical way of where the exponent of two comes from. But it's also just Think about it this way. We use the exponent of two because we're in the two-dimensional or the flat surface. And when we do volume, we'll use to the power of three because we'll be in the three-dimensional surface. Um, in middle school, when we are looking at different dimensions in our shapes, um, so down here, you'll kind of see some of the different dimensions like your base and your height and stuff. Um, we use length and width when we're talking about things, especially in like rectangles and squares and parallelograms, but sometimes they're replaced with base and height because base and height um, are more common in these kinds of shapes than length and width. Um, our shapes like our triangles and trapezoids have bases and heights. So understanding what base and height are in shapes, I'm going to pull down so I can reference the images. Um, so the base is usually the bottom side of a two-dimensional shape. Like on, you can see on all of these figures, you can think about like this bottom line as being the base of the shape. Um, I like to kind of think about it like the floor. Like if this was like a room, um, well, not really a room, but like if I was looking at like inside of a room, like this was like a window, this would be like the floor. Um, I don't know if that made any sense. If that didn't make any sense, ignore the analogy. But um, in a trapezoid, there's actually two bases. We have our top and our bottom base and they're parallel, um, meaning those sides, or the, if we were to like make them as lines, like they, they're never intersecting. Um, on a parallelogram, um, 
like we have two different things that could be considered the base. Like you could consider the top the base as well because it's going to be the same measurement as like the bottom. Um, but in a parallelogram, right, there are two sets of parallel lines. That's what makes it a parallelogram. So we have parallelograms like our rectangles and squares. Those are special parallelograms that form right angles. And then we also have parallelograms that don't form right angles, which kind of look like smooshed rectangles. Um, but in all of these, they they have a base. Um, in rectangles and squares, we kind of think about them as either like the width or the length, depending on, you know, the length is typically the longer side. Um, but we can also just say there's a base as well. When we talk about the height of a figure, we're talking about how tall the figure is. So a lot of times height is shown with a dotted line because height is not necessarily um, always one of the sides of the shape. So you'll notice when we measure the height, we're measuring it at what's called a perpendicular line. Essentially, if we measured from the top to the bottom of the shape at a line that forms a right angle with the base, that is the what's called the height of the shape. Um, sometimes height is measured, you can measure it outside of a shape. So sometimes if we have like obtuse triangles or sometimes even in like these parallel, pal oh my gosh, parallelograms, um, you can measure it outside as long as it's a straight line from the top of the shape to the base and it forms a right angle. So you'll notice I kind of just kept the line going. This is supposed to be a dotted line. It doesn't look very dotted on my paper, but um, you can measure the height outside of the shape as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the shape. Um, sometimes, like you'll notice in a rectangle, the height is also like one of the sides of the shape. I'm just drawing a right angle there so you can see. In a right triangle, if I was to draw a right triangle, the height is also like one of the sides of the shape because it's the measurement from the top to the bottom at that right angle. Um, but a lot of times in parallelograms, trapezoids and triangles, the height is measured kind of through the shape. That's why we use a dotted line. So, you know, like this is not a real part or a real side of the shape. Okay. Um, the formulas for how we find the area of a shape are given on this other side. Um, you don't, of course, like there's nothing you need to write down. So these are basically how we find the area of different shapes. So the nice thing is once we know like what our base and what our height is, we can just plug them into these formulas and do the math it's telling us to do. And then we get our area. So for rectangles and parallelograms, we just have to do our base times our height. Um, in a, remember in a rectangle, we could also say like length times width. That's another way that we find the area. That means the same thing here. Um, in a triangle, we're also going to do base times height, but we're going to take half. So we're going to divide by two once we're all done. Um, and if you think about it, you could take a rectangle or a square and you can split it into two triangles. So to find the area of that triangle, you could just find the area of the rectangle and then split it into two because you have two equivalent triangles that are inside of it. That's where the formula comes from. And then the last one is trapezoid. Trapezoid, um, I'm not going to say it's like the hardest shape to find the area for because like it's not really mathematically, it's not that hard. It's just a little bit more steps than rectangles and triangles. So in a trapezoid, because we have two bases, what we're going to do is we're going to add the sum or we're going to find the sum of the bases. So add up the bases, then we're going to multiply by the height, and then we're going to divide by two, or then we're going to take half. It's because in a trapezoid, we can break that down into two triangles and a rectangle. So this is kind of combining finding the area of two triangles and a rectangle into one formula. So trapezoids are just a little bit te more tedious because there's three steps, adding the bases, multiplying by the height, and then taking half. So the rest of this video, we are going to actually do your practice questions. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy down these three problems um, on the other side of your notebook for your practice questions and then do them together so you can see an example of what, um, you know, how we actually find the area. What's nice is we basically just go plug it in and essentially do an order of operations problem. So um, this page, because we've kind of filled it all in, um, in class or on your own, um, what I did is I just folded it in half and then I decided to tape the back side. So not the side that says glue here. I taped the other side of it. So that way when I open it, it opens like out of my notebook, not into my notebook, but it's up to you what side like you want to tape it down on. Just make sure it's easy to open up and read. Um, so now we're going to do our practice questions. I'm going to let you guys take a moment to pause. Um, these are also just the same problems that are on the bottom of that um, handout that 
uh, I just showed you how to tape in. So here are the first two. You have a parallelogram and you have a triangle. So go ahead and pause and copy down um, the shape and its dimensions. Okay, and then here is the trapezoid. Okay, so when we're finding the area, I'm just going to kind of go question by question. When we're finding the area, we want to just write down, identify the shape. And then once we identify the shape, we identify the formula we need, and then we plug in what we need. So this is a parallelogram. The parallelogram formula is we're going to do our base times our height. So um, this is going to be our base of 12 and our height, a lot of people get confused and put eight. Our height is remember where it forms a right angle. It's typically a dotted line. So this is our height here. Our height is going to be six. So um, all I'm going to do to find the area of this parallelogram is I am going to do area is equivalent to 12 times six. So the area is equivalent to 72 centimeters. And don't forget, I'm gonna put my units squared because we're working in the two-dimensional space. So that's all I need to do to find the area of a parallelogram. Um, and I'm looking right now at the, I did these problems before the video and I realized I did the problem wrong. So I'm making a note to myself to go fix the answer. I made the mistake of multiplying by eight and when I did it by myself, but now that I'm showing you, I caught my mistake. Good thing I didn't teach you the wrong way. Um, okay, in a triangle, they gave us a lot of different information. So in a triangle, the formula we need, oops, the formula we need is we just need to do the um, base times the height and then we take half. So you could put like one half times that, or you could just put like a line and put it like over two. Either way is showing the same um, kind of math. So our base is going to be 12. That's the bottom part of our shape. And then our height again is gonna be this dotted line where it forms a right angle, which is going to be four. So to find the area of this triangle, I am simply gonna do one half of a 12 times four, um, so 12 times four is, uh, 48 and, um, half of 48 is going to be 24. Um, they also gave us the units of centimeters. So I'm going to put centimeters squared. So this is my area of the triangle. And all I did was use the formula. Okay. Let's do a trapezoid. Trapezoids are a little bit more tedious, but not too bad. So the area of a trapezoid is going to be one half the sum of the bases. So that little one and two on the formula means like base one and base two. It doesn't have anything to do with exponents. Um, it just means base one and base two. And then I'm going to multiply that times the height. So let me plug in what I have. So I'm going to take one half. Remember, I have two bases. So it doesn't matter which you choose is base one and base two. I kind of like to do like the top is base one and the bottom is base two, but it really doesn't matter because either way you add them, you'll end up with the same thing. So we're gonna do one half, eight plus six. And then we're gonna multiply by the height, which don't get it confused for the sides of your trapezoid. It is going to be, um, it's going to be this uh, height here of four with the dotted line. So times four. So this is all gonna be equivalent to the same thing as um, seven times four, which is 28. And I wanna make sure I put my centimeters squared. So the area of this trapezoid is 28 centimeters squared. And what I did was I added eight plus six and got 14, did 14 times four. And then um, that's how you get or, and then take half and that's how you get 28. So what I did is I actually took half first um, now that I'm looking at my work. So uh, eight plus six is 14 and then half of 14 is seven and then 17 times, or I'm sorry, seven times four is 28. Um, so you can kind of go, I went a little bit out of order, but either way I would have ended up with the same answer. If I would have done 14 times four and then taken half, I would have also gotten 28. So if you have any questions, please make sure you ask your teacher. Um, these are the practice questions. So you don't really need to go check the table of contents, but like if you tried these on your own and you you know, didn't really follow the video because you wanted to try them on your own first, you can check your table of contents. As always, I hope you have a great day. See you later.